All right, so section 4.9, solving quadratic functions with the quadratic formula. Okay, so let me write down the quadratic formula for you guys. So quadratic formula. I don't know if you guys already know this from before. I can't recall when the first time is that you actually see this. But this is what it looks like. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c divided by two times a. Now the ABCs come from your formula, right? So this is the formula given y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now what does this do? Remember how during your quiz you guys had to factor and then after you factored you had to solve each one of them, right? You had to do that by factoring in order to solve. This is a way to solve without ever factoring. You don't have to factor to find your answers anymore if you have this type of uh, equation. But you do need to know that formula. It's pretty big, um, it's pretty complicated. Actually, it is over there. If you look on the left or your right side towards the back, it says quadratic formula. There it is in green, right? X equals negative B plus or minus squared to B squared minus 4C over 2A. Um, so you can always kind of look at that for reference. But this is a formula we're going to be using to solve, okay? So let me show you how this works. So example number one. Now, we're only going to do three examples, and then we're going to be done, okay? Because literally every problem is done exactly the same way, um, unless you have to move something over. But other than that, it's still done the same way. So let me give you uh, some examples here. So part A. Now, normally, if I gave you a problem that looked like this, this would be considered one of the hard X method problems, okay? Because of the fact that a is equal to 3, not a equal to 1. If a was equal to 1, then this would be a lot easier if I had to do the x method. But I'm not going to do the x method. I'm going to use the uh, quadratic formula. Now notice my a term is 3, my b term is 4, and my c term is negative 5. Okay, I'm going to write that down so that I know what the numbers are, okay? So A is three, B is four, C is negative five. Now in order to solve, let me write my equation now, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of, remember guys, I like to rewrite these things over and over and over again because by the time we're done doing these three problems, if you're rewriting them with me, you'll probably have it memorized, okay? And maybe you might have to review again a little later, but but it'll be easier to memorize it, okay? So always rewrite. So here we go. Let's plug in the information. X is equal to negative B. B is negative four plus or minus the square root of B squared, that's four squared minus four times A, which is three, times C, which is negative five, divided by, 2 times a, that's 2 times 3. Can you see why I tell you guys that it's supposed to be easy, but we could mess up on the plugging in and working out of the problem, right? Like there's a lot of stuff going on. So take your time. Don't rush through it. So here we go. Let's take our time through this. x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared is 16. Okay? Now, I would get on my calculator and I would do uh, negative 4 times 3, which is 12, times negative 5. So what's 12, negative 12 times negative 5? That would be 10 60. So positive 60 over 6. Let me just give this a couple seconds here. I'm bringing out my phone so I can get my calculator. Because like I said, using a calculator is going to be, uh, it's kind of nice to have it. So I'm just checking something really quick. All right. So 
x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 76 divided by 6. Now at this point, you're going to want to use your calculator because I think your calculators do this. Correct me if I'm wrong. But does your calculator reduce uh, radicals for you guys? Your, okay, Th those are the ones I let you borrow, right? Those black ones. So if you were to type in square root of 76, it'll automatically throw out this number for you, okay? So it's going to do this. 2 square root of 19. Okay, um, in case you forgot how the square root of 76 works, you have to think, okay, I have the square root of, hold on, let me use a different color here. I have the square root of 76. That does not have a nice square root. So let me think of two numbers that multiply together. One of them will have a nice square root. So I think, okay, what's 76 divided by 2? Well, that's 38. 2 and 38 do not have square roots. Okay, so that doesn't work. What about 76 divided by 4? Well, that's 4 times 19. And 4 has a nice square root. The square root of 4 is 2. And that's how the calculator gets 2 radical 19. Because it works through the problem and it says, oh, what can I take out from, from 76? What will work? So that's how the calculator goes from square root of 76 to 2 square root of 19. It, it does that work in green on the side. Okay, it just doesn't show you. Okay. Um, now notice I can reduce. You see how there's a, a 4 here, a 2, and a 6? I can reduce all of those by 2. So let me write this out. x equals negative 2 plus or minus 1 square root of 19 over 3. And this is my final answer. Now, just so you know, there's going to be two problems in your homework that are going to say, get your answer, plug it into your calculator, and give us the decimal answers. So you're going to literally do uh, negative 2 plus something minus something. So we'll, we'll do one of those, okay? But I'm not going to do this one right here, okay? But you may have to uh, do that with your calculator to actually get the actual solution. So before I move forward, um, do you guys have any questions on this one? Let me go back up really quick just to show you how we started, and then I'll go back down. But we got our original problem, 3p squared plus 4p minus 5 equal to 0. I labeled my ABCs on the side. I wrote my equation out, and I just plugged all my numbers in, right? All the numbers where they belong, I put them in there. I started working through it slowly, eventually got to this point right here, okay, where I'm basically saying that's my answer. But, you know, they always want you to simplify as much as possible. So I said, okay, what's the square root of 76? Now, I just use my calculator, okay. Um, I have a calculator on my phone that can do this stuff pretty nicely. Um, so uh, when I pushed square root of 76, it gave me 2 radical 19, okay. So I put that in 2 radical 19 then I said oh look 4 2 and 6 they have something in common let me reduce it what they have in common is a 2 so I said uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2 2 divided by 2 is 1 6 divided by 2 is 3 right so I reduced it and there's my solution now there's two answers okay notice that there are two answers and the reason why I tell you there's two is look at this thing right here plus or minus right plus or minus so you would have to get your calculator and do negative 2 plus the square root of 19 and then divide that by 3 and then your other answer would be negative 2 minus the square root of 19 and then divide that by 3 and that's how you find your two answers on your calculator okay so there's always gonna be like two solutions unless that square root becomes a zero but we'll we'll discuss that when we need to so that's part a any questions on that one all right, part B, uh, let me do this one. Negative 2n squared plus 2n plus 6 equals negative 4. So I'm just changing it up a little bit because you're going to get four problems that are similar to part A. You're going to get two problems that are similar to part B. 
And then you're going to get two problems that are similar to part C when, when I do that. Okay? So remember, write your ABCs, but before you can do that, if you have to solve, you've got to set it equal to zero. So let's, let's set it equal to zero. Let's add four. So I get negative 2n squared plus 2n plus 10 equals zero. All right, let's write my ABCs. A, B, C. What's my A term? Negative 2. What's B? 2 and C? 10. Okay, so there's my ABCs. Remember, my formula is x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Again, you don't have to write that formula, but trust me, I, I've told you guys before, I, I did not like math when I was in high school. And one of the main reasons was because I was sucked at memorizing formulas because honestly, I just never tried. I never tried to memorize it, right? Um, it wasn't until I got to college that my professor used to tell me, write the formula down on every problem you do is like trust me just do it so i started doing it and i'm like oh man i remember everything all my formulas no matter how long they were they were so easy because i would write them down so much you know just muscle memory would stick to my head and i would remember everything so yeah write them down if you have a hard time memorizing write them down okay so um all right let's plug numbers in here we go so like I said, this is pretty easy. This whole process is easy, but you can mess up when you do the plugging in, so be careful. All right, negative b. My b term is a 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now, b squared is going to be 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 2, times c, which is 10. All that divided by 2 times a, which is negative 2. Again, that's really the hard part, okay? That's really the, the hard part there um, because that's what things can kind of go wrong. If you don't plug in the numbers right and stuff like that, then you start getting weird answers and, and stuff like that. So, By the way, there are websites that you can type in, put like quadratic formula, solving for quadratic functions using quadratic formula. And they'll have like a, a website where you just got to put in your ABC and it can solve it for you. I wouldn't tell you to go do that to find all your answers, but at least you can go there to check your answers, see that you got it right. Okay. So, but you guys have so much at your disposal, so use it. So negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared is four. Negative 4 times negative 2 is a positive 8, and positive 8 times 10 is a 80, so this is 80, over uh, negative 4 on the bottom. So again, I'm going to get my calculator ready here because uh, I'm going to need it. So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 84 over negative 4. Now I'm going to go to my calculator and type in the square root of 84. And it spit out 2 radical 21. So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2 radical 21 over negative 4. All right. So let's go ahead and reduce. What can I divide all these numbers by? A 2. Now, some people will say a negative 2, and that's okay. You can do a negative 2 as well. Um, but we could just divide it by 2, and that's fine. Um, so if I divide everything by 2, negative 2 becomes negative 1, plus or minus. Uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1. All right, so uh, 1 square root of 21 divided by negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. And there's your answer. And again, if they wanted both solutions... They're right there. Both solutions are right there. Um, I don't like to write it like this, but sometimes you'll see it on a state test. They'll do it like this. And I, I think it's the ugliest thing to do, but you might see them write it like this. So the first answer 
would be negative 1 plus 1 radical 21 over negative 2, comma, and the other one would be negative 1 minus 1 radical 21 divided by negative 2. Like they're literally splitting up the plus and the minus. That's what they're doing. They're splitting it up. They're saying, okay, first add, now subtract. Those are your two answers. Okay? So in state tests, sometimes they write it like this. So just know that sometimes they'll extract them like that. Okay? And then they would say, oh, well, we don't want them like that. We want you guys to plug them into your calculator and give us the actual decimal answer. So we're going to do that next on part C. Okay? So what would the actual decimal answer be? Are we okay so far? Again, I'm hoping you guys are seeing that it looks scary. I know it kind of looks scary because the formula looks like really long and all that stuff, but it really isn't a terrible uh, problem. It's just a little lengthy because you got to plug in numbers and work your way through them slowly. So as long as you know the formula, you should be okay. All right. So here's the last one now. And the last one, this is what it says. Solve each equation with the quadratic formula. So, okay, great. And it says, use your calculator and find the decimal answers to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so we're going to round to the nearest hundredths, but they want us to use a calculator for this one. All right, I know you could have used it before, but notice how before the way I left my answers were in general form. I didn't, I didn't actually find the decimal representation of it. I just left it the way it was. Okay. This one I'm going to actually fix. Now, first, let's fix things. i got to move this 1 over here and this um, negative 5 over there, right? So I'm going to add, let's do the 5x first. So I get 5x squared plus 5x equals to 1. And then let's move the 1 over at the same time here. So minus 1, minus 1. I get 5x squared plus 5x minus 1 equals 0. So this is my brand new equation right here. Okay? 5x squared plus 5x minus 1 equals to 0. So what's my A term here? That's a 5. What about my B term? And my C? Negative 1. All right. My formula, x equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. If you ever want to know how they figured this out, I can show you. Okay, Maybe I'll show you if, we're, if we do completing the square because that's part of it. So here we go. I got everything I need. Let's plug in the numbers. Negative of b, that's negative 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 5 squared, minus 4 times a times c. So 4 times a, that's 5 times c, that's negative 1. All divided by 2 times a, that's 2 times 5. Again, this is, I, I think that's the hardest part to doing these problems, is this step right here. Plugging in everything correctly. If you mess up on one sign, you mess up on one multiplication, the whole thing's messed up. Okay? So you just got to be careful with it. Take your time. No, no rush. You only have eight problems, and most of it's done on calculator, so it's not you're going to be struggling for five hours. Right? So here we go. X equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20 times negative 1 is positive 20 over 10. All right, so x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 45 over 10. Okay, so... Since they want me to do this with the calculator, I am not going to simplify. Okay, now I'm going to do it just to do it, but you're going to stop right here and you're going to give me two answers. Okay, now I'll show you how to do them right now, but, but that's where you would stop. Now, just for the purposes of, of uh, doing a little bit extra, the square root of 45, 45 is 9 times 5, right? 9 times 5. And 9 has a square root of what? 
3. So that means this is 3 square root of 5 over 10. Okay, that's that's the way you can simplify it. But notice I'm not I'm not going to go there. Okay? I just want to find my two answers. So I'm going to get my calculator. And let's see. One of the answers is going to be I'm going to put a parenthesis because there's going to be a numerator and a denominator. So negative 5 plus the square root of 45. So that's my numerator. Negative 5 plus the square root of 45. I put a parenthesis there. Divided by 10 equals. They said round to the nearest hundredth. So that would be. Whoops. Give me a second. Let me change the color here. Let me set this up. Um, that would be tens hundred. So 0 0.17. 0 0.17. Now let's find the other one. The first time I added, now I want to subtract. So negative 5 minus the square root of 45. That's my numerator divided by 10. That's my denominator. That's negative 1.17. So negative 1.17. And this would be my solution right here. Okay, and this is what you guys have for homework.